So we saw how assigning a clear fix to the wrapper CSS allows it to properly display and, and show even in live view. We can see now that the container adjusts to the height of the contents. And if we add more elements to these containers, then the wrapper itself, the red box, will adjust accordingly. If there are still issues with that, there is one more attribute that you can use that will assist. And to do that, you can click on a wrapper to make sure it's selected. And if you don't like using this type of approach to adding CSS to your pages and prefer the dialog box where everything is better organized, you can just double click the the CSS for it. So this class, if you double click it, will bring up the box itself, which you can then add to. So it will already contain existing attributes that you've assigned in the CSS. And you can add additional ones depending on your needs. Uh, in this case, what we want to address is in the where is it? It's in the positioning section. And here we have an attribute called overflow. And overflow allows us to address how containers react when their contents either surpass or adjust. They, they go beyond the parameters of what attribute we've assigned. For example, if our container has a fixed height of 150 pixels and then we insert an image in it that's 200 pixels, should the container expand to fit the new image or should it remain 150 pixels and just chop off whatever is not visible? In this case, what we want to do, we want to make sure that if the contents of our wrapper expands, we want to make sure that it stays visible always. So this is an optional attribute you can assign. It's usually helpful to do. It doesn't hurt anything, of course. And you can click Apply, and it gets added over here to the list of uh, CSS. Um, <clears throat> you can see it over there as well. So um, the other options you have here are hidden, which uh, obviously would keep the container the same size and chop off whatever is outside the predefined dimensions. There's scroll which is interesting because the container will basically start displaying a scroll bar on the right if the, the contents are bigger than uh, the assigned value. And auto does just that. It basically automatically adjusts to whatever's happening inside this container. Uh, visible is one step above that by saying that you always want the contents to be visible. So click apply, click OK. Technically we don't see any changes happening here, but uh, if we now expand the contents of these containers, our wrapper tag will adjust accordingly. So uh, we've looked at what happens when we float items left and what happens if we actually delete one of these containers. Let's get rid of this middle one and see what happens to the container on the right. As expected, because this one also has, um, <clears throat> this is box three, and the float attribute is, is assigned left. As expected, it lines up to the right of this existing container as it's being stacked. But what if we want one container on the left, the other on the right? Well. It's pretty straightforward at this point. We can just change the float attribute to right, and it pushes itself to the outermost edge of the container that it's within. Um, this is useful if you want to have a right hand area for other content, additional content, and this one, uh, for example, this, this could be your main content area. And instead of 150 pixels for box one, we would make it maybe 640 pixels. And that gives us uh, a nice big area for content here and maybe an additional 
go box three, we can make this maybe, whoops, box 250 pixels. Now what happened was this is too big. <coughs> so if we look at the margin, the width of this container, the margin that's assigned to these, including the width of this second container, it goes beyond the width of this wrapper. So we might have to reduce the size to maybe 200. And there you go. And, and then you can just play around with the values a little bit in there. 20 until it, it, it gets a bit right. This is why it's useful to use the grid system because you can do the math very quickly and the numbers kind of make sense instead of sitting here doing the guesswork. Um, those numbers could carry over from your Photoshop file and take it from there. So we're going to go 230 pixels. You can play around with margins if you want to change a few things here and there. And this is floating left, this is floating right. If we change the width of our wrapper now, so instead of 960, we go to 1280. Oops. 80. These things will forever be going in opposite directions. This one's floating right, this one's floating left. Now let's say I add a third box between these two again. We'll add, insert, a div tag. We'll give it the class of box2, which already exists here, and is already floating left, just to see what happens. There you go. So it kind of creates a bit of a break here. And we're going to close this wrapper down a bit, just to see what's going on here. As you can see, it can get a little frustrating. You have to make sure that the math adds up and the numbers make sense. So box one is too wide, so we'll make it 300 pixels again. Now things are making sense again because everything fits. Uh, if I change this size, so this is box two, and I make it 150 pixels, it will stick with this guy here because they're both aligned floating left, but this container, again, will be pushing towards the right. Uh, that should give you some idea of how to deal with floating, but there's also one more thing. Uh, if you begin a new line, for example, and you want to insert a new row of boxes, uh, you probably have to clear the alignment already. So let's create a new div. And we'll call this new line box. And we'll create a new CSS rule for this. OK. And again, we go to the box. We'll assign it a value of 350 pixels wide, margin 10 pixels. We'll give this one a border as well. Um, we'll make it uh, a double border just so we can distinguish it. Thin, and we'll give it the color blue. And in terms of positioning, we are going to hmm, do that. Maybe the border box height clear. Here we go. Clear. We're going to clear both. So it's like starting over, starting a new line without any influence from other floating elements above it, which can be inherited. By clearing both and assigning it to this particular box, it disregards any of the floating that's taken place before it. So we click OK, we click OK again, and it inserts it. And by default, it goes into the new slot. Now, if we look here and we turn off the clear both, look what happens. So again, this is a new line box. This is the box we just inserted. Um, <clears throat> The attribute, attribute clear both allows it to stack nicely in the row, naturally where we expect it to go under these. But if I turn off clear both, suddenly the container just goes wonky. So if we look at it in live view, it looks like this. So you see the blue box overlaps with the orange box because it's still trying to inherit from above. And the first available position it's seeing is, is on the left. And it's just one of those HTML, CSS things. Uh, what's important to remember, if we go back to normal view, 
is that if you assign clear both, it usually resets everything and it starts making more sense again. So that about sums it up. What we're going to do next is build a new layout from scratch just so that you can see how to approach uh, a typical header, content, sidebar, footer layout for a typical website.